a Washington Post article of November 20th, 2004, written by staff writer Rick Weiss, discusses a symposium that was held uh, concerning the idea of uh, genetic manipulation, and in, in particular, uh, human-animal hybrids. They have, for example, this uh, statement by Robert Streifer, professor of philosophy and bioethics at the University of Wisconsin. Imagine, he said, a um, human chimpanzee. Gary, tell us mm. about it. A human chimpanzee uh, chimera, that is a genetically altered chimpanzee and human combination, uh, created especially to do menial work. And this is, by the way, uh, something that's been discussed for years. If it became possible to create a subhuman species to do all the dirty work that human beings don't want to do, uh, would that, in fact, be ethical? Now, the fact that you can even ask the question boggles my mind because uh, that's a monster that you're creating there, uh, J.R., and it goes ev against everything that God states uh, uh, is forbidden in his word. The human uh, chimpanzee called the humanzee, and by the way, uh, J.R., this is genetically possible today. It's been pointed out uh, in several places that the difference between a chimpanzee and a human being uh, on the DNA ladder is uh, only a few thousand places. There are significant differences, but there are not that many. So it would be possible to create this monster. And according to this symposium, they suggested, uh, what if? Imagine. They didn't say that it has been done, but they said, imagine a human chimpanzee endowed with speech and enhanced with an enhanced potential to learn. And then he went on to say there's a knee-jerk reaction that enhances the moral status of an animal, that, it, uh, uh, that enhancing the moral status of an animal is bad. If you did it and you gave it the protections it deserves, they say, how could the animal complain? Mm. Made to perform dangerous jobs or menial tasks. It's ridiculous. It would be unethical Absolutely. at the outset. And, J.R., at this point, I'd like to introduce a question. <clears throat> what happened to all those chimeric creatures prior to the flood, in the days of Noah, that were created uh, through genetic manipulation? The union of uh, renegade angels and women, or, uh, God forbid, even genetic tampering to create something like humanzies. We don't know what they were doing, but it was absolutely forbidden, so much so that God said, it repents me that I have made man. I'm going to have to destroy this whole thing. Uh, and, uh, what happened to those people, those beings that were destroyed? Uh, there is a, a clue. In the Old Testament, there is a class of creatures called the Rephaim. And I'm reading here Isaiah 26:14, describing these creatures. They are dead. They shall not live. Now, the word dead here in Isaiah 26, 14 is the translation of the Hebrew Rephaim. They are dead. They shall not live. They are deceased. They shall not rise. Therefore, hast thou visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. Now, many theologians, uh, the sages of Israel, have weighed in on this over the years, and they say that the Rephaim are the departed spirits of those corrupt monsters that lived during the flood, and they are incapable of regeneration, of redemption, of salvation, of spiritual birth. They are forever damned. Now that makes, that gives you pause. Now we can understand how this could happen in the days of Noah because the Bible said it did. But when Jesus comes along and says that it's going to happen again in the last days, as it was in the days of Noah, so, it shall, so shall it be also in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, for they reading, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. And that's possible union between angelic uh, creatures and humans. That it would occur before the second coming of Christ and bring on the judgment of God once again. We are told in the in, uh, Jewish literature that uh, God gave Adam um, a prophecy that once the world would be destroyed by water and once the world would be destroyed by fire. Well, it was destroyed by water because of genetic manipulation 
it's entirely possible that it will be destroyed by fire because of the same. Mm. The team of genetic researchers we mentioned a minute ago at the University of Nevada at Reno uh, has already uh, created that sheep liver that's about 80% human. JR, they've also created a mouse brain that is 1% one per, one human neural material, and they're, they're shooting for a mouse brain that is 100% human neurons. Why they're doing it, I do not know. But, but again, this is proceeding today. Even as we speak, this research is going on. And I believe God will bring his judgment down upon the human race just as he said he would. Mm. I'd like to read from Romans. In this verse, J.R., we usually read in the context of sin and the sin nature of man. But listen carefully to what Paul says in his letter to the Romans. <clears throat> uh, this is Romans 1, 22 and 23. Pro professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. You know, that speaks of the idolatry of falling down before some kind of a strange creature, uh, like, for example, the god Thoth in Egypt, you know, that had the head of an ibis in the body of a human being. Paul's obviously referring here to the practice of idolatry, but more than that, he may be remotely or indirectly referring to uh, human animal chimeras. Mm. Mm. Incredible. Well, uh, it's a fascinating article. I know that uh, such ma genetic manipulation uh, is against the Word of God. It's amazing, though, how many things are going on. I heard Paul Harvey, for example, some years ago, uh, give the story of a human pig, a combination of human and pig, mm -hmm. born in India. I, I don't know how this... Uh, uh, played out. I don't know what happened to it, but they killed it on the spot, but I heard that it actually occurred. We are living in the last days. You know, in Leviticus, uh, in chapter 18, verse 23, uh, the idea of any um, uh, human animal contact for the purpose of um, uh, creating a being or an offspring is absolutely forbidden. Leviticus 18:23. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith, and neither shall any woman stand before beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. If a man lieth with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and ye shall slay the beast. And J.R., this goes on. We don't have to go into any more detail except to say uh, that uh, God assigns the death penalty to such uh, behavior that is the production of a human animal offspring of, of any sort. We are told that in the end of days there would be a seed of the serpent who would um, become the Antichrist. Is it possible that the Antichrist himself will be a demon seed? Could he be a clone of some ancient uh, demigod of the past? Or might he be the product of some strange genetic manipulation? Perhaps to give him a little bit of superhuman mental capacity, physical capacity. He might come forth uh, uh, convincing people that he really was a Superman of sorts. And let's face it, J.R., mm -hmm. uh, people have been looking for a Superman for a long time. Yes. Even the children's programs on Saturday mornings yeah. uh, are made up of these kinds of uh, demonic creatures. And uh, they are the heroes of the young people of our generation. What we're saying is to be conscious of what's going on in the scientific community today. Be aware of this little word chimera. It's a, it, what it is, is just a fancy word for monstrosity. And it's against the law of God. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you need to trust Him because He alone can give you eternal life. Man is not a product of evolution. He's not a product of genetic manipulation. He's a creation of God. So trust Jesus today. We'll be back in just a moment. The nightmare of the human chimera. Well, it's a fascinating subject, but definitely one that needs to be treated in the realm of biblical prophecy. 
Gary, thanks for writing this article. And by the way, you can get it in the March 2005 edition of Prophecy in the News. J.R., uh, the bottom line here, uh, this is a very dark subject. But I want to tell you, it's encouraging because Jesus said that all this was going to happen and that when it did, start becoming more spiritually aware, aware of the times and seasons because it means we're drawing closer and closer to his return for his people. And as J.R. always says, keep looking up. Yes. So if you don't know Christ as your Savior, I urge you to trust him right now. Don't wait. Don't put it off. Uh, bow your head and pray a simple sinner's prayer. Ask the Lord to forgive you and save you. He will if you'll ask him. This is J.R. Church and Gary Sturman. Until next time, keep looking up.